What's going on, everybody? Start by giving this little uh, lens here a nice little cleaning. Got some exciting footage for y'all. We just got back from an eight day trip to probably the most wilderness place you can go in Michigan, least, tra bleh, least traveled national park in all the continental 48 with the most return visitors, and we absolutely know why. So, due to the fact that we have like 300 gigabytes of video from this trip, we're going to break it up into a little mini series, if you will. First episode you guys are going to see is just our journey. It's a heck of a thing, even just to get out to the island when we got there. Caught three coaster brook trout, something I've never caught before. Lost the biggest steelhead I've ever even seen in my life. Still kind of salty about that. And absolutely put the beat down on the lake trout. So, without any further ado, here is the first of a few episodes of our first ever, and hopefully our first of many, Isle Royal fishing trips. Enjoy, everybody. What's going on, everybody? Uh, we are... Houghton bound. We'll be staying the night and jumping on the ferry headed to the island bright and early tomorrow morning. But we have to do one thing before we leave and stop at Walmart, the biggest shopping center in all of the Upper Peninsula, and it is the day before the 4th of July. This may be the most exciting part of the adventure. No, it won't be, but it'll be it'll be interesting. I don't get to do this trip very often. I am spending two dollars on a dehydrated, three dollars on a dehydrated ice cream bar. Done with our Walmart shopping spree. Now we gotta drive to Hopi. Go from there. That and whatnot. I don't really um, add up things when I'm buying them, and I definitely had a budget for this. And we kept it under the budget, ten dollars to spare. This guy said he got it. About two o'clock in the morning, we made it to Houghton. Got a friend that let us crash on their couch. Sleep for about four hours and catch the ferry, and we are Isle Royale bound. Catch on the flip side. Well, six o'clock in the morning. Three hour nap completed. Six hour boat ride across the middle of Lake Superior. And uh, we'll be on the island. Probably nap on the way. Morning running on uh, virtually no sleep. See if James can do this part without crashing. We've made it this far. Now the mission is get that boat onto that boat and then go a little six mile ferry ride across uh, good old Mother Superior. And they somehow drop us back off of that boat into the water and we're on our own. Decent. Everybody's got their lucky fishing hat, you know, their lucky fishing lure. I'm starting a new tradition. Lucky fishing socks. Gonna throw these, uh, they appear to be dressy type socks, but they've got fishing lures on them. Got them from a birthday. Haven't taken them out of the package yet. This may be my one pair of socks for the whole island. We'll see. Maybe I'll put another pair on. So I started talking, which I have a tendency to do with these guys here in this much nicer boat for uh, Lake Superior than ours. And our boat is now on the big boat, and I completely missed it all on camera. But we will get this boat going on just to show you guys how it works. And then we'll get my boat going back into the water when we get to our destination. That's the plan at least. I'll probably start talking to somebody else. And the two biggest Lake Michigan ports to fish out of are Algoma and Kiwani. So we go over there. I heard about Kiwani. I keep this at, there's a uh, marina in Kiwani that services this, but I keep it in Algoma. Okay. 
Oh, the fishing can be fantastic. Oh my lord. Well, there's a little uh, selfie pole, if you will. Right. Yeah, yeah. wipe off oh, your yeah. shoes. Don't be spreading nap weeds. Don't be spreading nap weeds. They have one of these at the they have one of these at the disc golf course by Tourist Park. And, um, it's uh, literally like a cigarette container. Mm -hmm. It's like, are you guys kidding me? Get them clean, Jamesy. Yeah, nap weeds all over my yard. It's it's the bane of my existence. We are heading aboard. Welcome. Thank you, sir. We got booze on this vessel. Oh. Done. Where you're the tour guide. You want to go up or? Oh, they have little tables. How old is this boat again? This is the MNT. Yeah, 1958, I thought. Or you want to go outside? Okay, let's go here. Watch your steps. I would have figured it out. Face first. Better raise that bridge or we're going down. Are you going to hit her, James? No. No, James says no. That gives me some false confidence, but confidence of that. I was wondering, like, how you... I've never... There can't be too many of these raised type bridges, right? Hey? Have you ever been to Duluth? Is that one is superior? Well, I go through Duluth to go to Mall of America. From <laughs> Marquette. Mm, yeah. I think I've been... I think I went through Duluth. Yeah, they get a lift bridge down there. It goes to, like, a little, like, city park. So I wonder which one of these is actually more efficient. This or like a drawbridge? I don't know. Probably this. It's counterweighted. Yeah. Keep it beast up. I, I'm, my hand's like sore. I'm holding this thing so but tight then, right now. But then again, like, you can only do this in an area where your ships are a certain height. You're yeah, not sail. Doing, you're not doing this in like a naval yard. Ooh, true. Oh, they, that, they do have... I don't think I think that's an actual drawbridge, the one on the Menominee. I want to say that's oh, that's, that's a what you would call it, a flag. Um, yeah, there's a couple of them because well, like the one on 41, like is that a bridge? Hit the trails. So what I'm gonna do is pass out some little cards here with the seven different principles, and I'm gonna have my handy little volunteers that receive a card read it back to me. So very many volunteers. Here's Gull Rock. We've had very good fishing from around Gull Rock. Weather dependent though, that looks like a haul. No, it's not. Okay. It's not. Uh, and it's aptly named because there'll be gulls there and there's no visit uh, vegetation there at okay. all. Okay. So along here is, we've caught all kinds of fish right along here. Mostly your salmons and trouts salmons there? Salmons and trout, you bet. Around there and around Gull Rock. Now, uh, let's see, North Government, and Blake Point, all okay. these points, anywhere in here is good. Okay. This is aptly named Five Foot Roof, roof, roof Reef. You can fish anywhere along here, and it, you'd want to do it on a flat water. Yeah, place, yeah. Because it's pop mark there, up and down, good structure, right in there. So here's South Government, North Government, and there's some reefs that run off of here. Okay. Those are good places, so you could concentrate in Scoville Point, around Gull Rock, Here's South Government and North Government out to five foot and back. Okay. That's real good. Now, and where was that spot you were saying was infested with bite? Oh, that's. Let's see, where are we? You, you'd have to take your boat. You'd have to do it on a calm day. Because I, I mean, I, we have all the all our camping gear and everything too. So you know, as long as we can pull into you know a little protected cove, we're I think we're planning on you know not circumnavigating, but right. you know traveling you know yeah. a little bit out of Rock Harbor. Two places that I, three places that I know of. Let's see now, here we are. Here's Tobin, Mosky Basin, Tobin Harbor. Here's Mosky. Oh my goodness, that was a big stack. Oh, here it is, it's Mosky Basin. Okay. Way down in here. So here's Rock Harbor, we're gonna go this way. People probably linger around Rock Harbor, I feel like the further away you get to it. Just so you know, the further you, know, further you can get away from where most people are, probably the better it is. We have departed the Portage Channel. We are now heading straight into the middle of Mother Superior. It's gonna get interesting from here on out. We met this guy at the dock, incredible human being, filled us in on a ton of fishing information. He's been coming out here for 26 years. So we took the learning curve, which was like this, and 
made it like this. So now I know what to do to catch fish. It just depends on whether or not it's all gonna work out, and I'm thinking it is. Eating my five dollar Jimmy Dean breakfast sausage sandwich. Washing it down with my three dollar black coffee. It's okay though. Finally made it to the front of the boat where I can actually look at my boat, which is uh, pretty neat. Still there, still still on board, which is good. We're a little over halfway to an island that is somewhere over there. I sure can't see it. It's over there though, we'll find it. There she is. 45 mile aisle. And the water is slick calm. We'll get together. We made her. They're getting the uh, gang plank off. Everybody's piling out, doing their thing. We're getting ready to do our thing. It's definitely going to be an adventure. Ye old bass tracker is coming off the boat right now. You guys may or may not be able to see this. GoPro has no zoom, and I'm not allowed to get any closer. No, no, no. They're doing the boat. Oh no! Just kidding. The lunch. Yeah. Settings. So there's like a delay. That's why I'm getting there. I, I was totally tired. I just sorry. There's another guy that brought a boat off, and I was just you know talking with him. And like my boat's behind me while I'm talking. I stopped talking. I turned around and started on the ferry. I'm like, God dang it! <laughs> oh, you got the hunters. When'd you get that decal? Like two weeks ago. I got one on each side. Nice. A freaking floating billboard, brother. Yeah, I like it. It looks good too. Happy Fourth, you. I'm gonna be down here helping you with your boats. So All right, be cool. down in the dock. We got the boat started, which is a, a good a good good start to the adventure. That the motor is uh, still working after a six hour ferry ride. So, I'm gonna give these nice gentlemen their ropes back, and we're on our way. What is it, what are they, Sherpas? Sherpas, right? Yeah, we got our Sherpa right here, schlucking our gear up to uh, our storage facility. And then we got some uh, 4th of July festivities to take part in. There's rumors of a canoe race, a little barbecue fish fry deal, so I'm at least gonna eat some fish which is okay, even if I didn't catch them, 100% okay, as long as I get to eat some fish this trip, maybe catch one. But uh, then we are, we're sending her. We are going to begin our adventure. We got about a 12 mile run to our campground to about what, a two mile portage to the first going, lake? I think we're going to Caribou Island tonight. We're okay, halfway. halfway, so about six miles tonight? Yeah. Okay, we got six miles to the campground we'll be staying at this evening, Caribou Island. You guys probably heard that with this awesome GoPro audio, but we will uh, check in with you shortly. Cool thing about the 4th of July on Isle Royal is uh, the lodge, the only lodge on the island puts on a little 4th of July festival, festivities, I guess you could say. Canoe race, dinner, and there's rumor of singing songs. So watching a bunch of uh, Government employees sing Independence Day songs should be a rather good time. To the sparkling sands of her diamond deserts And all around me a voice was sounding This is not what I was expecting to be eating for dinner tonight. I didn't even have to add water to this meal, which is uh, a good start to this adventure. We got Mr. America over here, the one and only legendary Ender B, the gas commander of the island. <laughs> He's gonna do some fishing with us when he's got days off and uh, we'll teach him a thing or two. My cold therapy is going very well, but the sun is just finally now dipping below the trees and it has probably dropped, I would reckon, probably 15 to 20-ish degrees in the last like 10 minutes. Probably time to get some sleeves on. I remember where they went in this uh, 
chaotic environment we live in temporarily. Just to uh, give you guys a little perspective, this is one of a few harbors on the island and it is the biggest and by city folk standards it's a pimple on a fly's butt <laughs> forgot my tripod for the only camera I got zoom so I apologize guys well this is the shenanigans of the National Park Service 4th of July, a oh, canoe. Oh, in trouble now. They call it a race. I'd say it's more of a bumper canoe. Oh, look at, look at that. I don't think my married friends are winning. Come on, you guys. Oh, that is them. Nope. These guys up here in front have a commanding lead, to say the least. And there's your second place. And there's everybody else. They've kind of given up. Okay, well, getting a little chillier as we go. Let's watch the first round of the canoe race. I think it's time to trade the fishing crocs for the hiking boots. And the bugs are getting, uh, not bad, but the few bugs that are out are getting rather aggressive. And I have limited good heavy deet bug spray. So I'm gonna call that the nuclear bomb of the trip if it gets uh, unbearable. I'll just kill him with deet. All right, everybody. We made it to our first OTG camping location. This place is called Tonker, Tonker Island, I believe. I will fact check that in the morning. I don't know if you guys can see the lights behind me. That is Rock Harbor, where we began. The reason I'm whispering is there's quiet hours out here from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Tomorrow, we have roughly another 10 miles to go that way before we begin our portage to a canoe slash inflatable raft adventure. Time to get some sleep. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Our adventures are powered by Hunters for Life and made possible by all of our great sponsors, including Adam Carpenter's Outdoor Show, Threads and Ink, Pike Dreamers Custom Lures, Superior Outfitters, Nemesis Baits, and as always, our good friends over at Mud Buddy Boats and Motors. Until next time, it's your Vice President Scott Evans. Happy adventures.